Hello, my name is Carl Jenkins. I'm the coordinator of Digital Arts at MSQ. I'm also a board member of First Coat and a practicing artist. Yeah, so as a, as a board member of First Coat, it's pretty interesting because obviously First Coat um, started the First Coat um, project or festival. And um, I think for me, I think that's where I guess you could say that the past and the sort of present and the future is kind of interlocked. I think with the, the festival, um, obviously it had finished, but I do think that the festival, or First Coats Festival, has a lot of opportunities um, still in it and probably more far-reaching opportunities in it. And I think those far-reaching opportunities came out of how fantastic the project was with Ian and Grace. I think that's what's great about the wall painting. It allows people to to see the city, to see their city in a completely new light. It also reinvigorates, um, even if they don't consciously know it, people's lives. Because, I mean, wall paintings, yes, aesthetically, they are what they are. You know, people either love or hate a wall painting because it's based on style or whatever they're into. But um, I think. Overall, a wall painting allows people a window to just daydream, and there's not enough daydreaming, um, especially probably in Australia. And that's not going on about you know what's happening to the arts, but it's just more about how art, the, the sort of monetary value of art, is not based within currency. It's the monetary value of art is quite far-reaching, and. For me, I look at something like First Coat and where it came from and then where First Coat obviously is currently, which is we've moved online for a while because of um, COVID and it's the same for I mean, the place to wander with any city in Australia or any city in the world. I mean, um, you know, regional galleries or national galleries or arts run spaces, whatever you want to call them, are all sort of suspended at the moment. So it's quite an interesting question to be asked about where do I think it'll go in 10 years because in many ways our worlds are sort of just are held in this kind of suspended state. Um, I think the exciting part of this is that I think Toowoomba has an amazing opportunity to do something quite exciting with its empty real estate. and. Uh, I know Newcastle obviously um, did the did the arts project of reinvigorating Hunter Street, um, which was a bit of a, a, a bombshell when BHP obviously left and uh, some other economic downturn. But I look at Toowoomba, and you know, if you look at the CBD of Toowoomba, the central part of Toowoomba, it has this these two layers, and the bottom layer is a certain type of economy, but the top layer which is the first floor spaces are empty. And I think it's here that you could have open studios. And, and I think most of the time when we think about studios, we think about, I don't know, easel painting or something. But a studio could be blended studios of people who do jewelry design or people who do ceramics or people who do illustration or web design or whatever it is. I think these collaborative kind of spaces um, Youth culture are not defined anymore by I'm a painter or I'm this or I'm that. They're just, I do. And they do lots of things and they don't think about how well versed or trained they are in anything really because the thing is is that they've got an insane amount of energy and they just want to express their ideas. So I think this is where having these kind of collaborative hubs would be quite amazing. Um, it also has a trickle-down effect. I mean, I can speak to my, for myself. I mean, my mother's a, an accountant and is still waiting for me to get a proper job. But she respects what I do. And I, I think that's what it's about, is that, you know, by having these studios, these collaborative spaces, um, the trickle-down effect is that the families and friends of these people that are involved start to get an understanding just as the wall paintings for First Coat gave people a renewed understanding about how art can have an impact in some way, shape or form. It doesn't have to be about, you know, an artwork sitting in a museum. Um, that it can be a real tangible, living, breathing thing that comes in many forms. And I think that's 
the exciting thing that Toowoomba offers because I'm from Newcastle and I know what Newcastle went through and um, and I think Newcastle very much architecturally, I mean obviously it's not as big as Newcastle, but architecturally very similar, the people are very similar. Um, and so it, it, it has a lot of options in terms of these spaces being vacant. And I think it just takes a bit of foresight and taking a bit of a chance to um, jump into the pool and see what can happen. Because I think that's the other thing. E even if something doesn't turn out the best, it actually still has a really positive impact. You know, even if a wall painting is not stylistically great, it still has an impact because it's been done. And whether it's affected the person who's been given the opportunity to do it, because it might be the first time you've ever been given that opportunity, or it impacts, you know, their family being proud of them or anything like this, um, these are all aspects of art that I don't think we really consider. We just consider the object. Um, so. I think for me, uh, Toowoomba has an incredible amount of artists. Um, and when I say artists, I don't just mean visual art, I mean graphic designers and people in theatre and music writing, etc. And I sort of see Toowoomba mirroring what's happening currently in Sydney, which is a lot of artists have moved from Sydney and have moved to the Blue Mountains. Um, the reason for that is because, you know, and I lived in Sydney, is that you know, before the highway was put in, it took like two and a half hours or something like that to get to the Blue Mountains. Now it takes like 40 minutes. Well, Toowoomba is geographically pretty similar to Brisbane. And I think that there can be a deeper connection with Brisbane. And I think there could be a deeper connection with Brisbane through whether it's shared projects or ideas or artists or whatever it is. And, and that's what's happening at the moment with the Blue Mountains to Sydney. So they've just built a new arts centre in the Blue Mountains, um, which has really reinvigorated that area. And I'm not saying, you know, to build a, a new arts centre in Toowoomba, even though it'd be amazing. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think, again, it shows that there's lots of people around who are really wanting to have a positive impact with their community and um, through just expressing the things they want to express. And I think, it would be a different question I was asked if I didn't think there was anyone around that, that is making things and is being really creative and positive and really interested in living in Toowoomba and yeah, wanting to have a positive impact. But um, the thing is, it's the opposite of that. There's lots of people. And there's lots of people, whether they're uh, older age all the way down to youth culture. And I think that's what's so interesting about Toowoomba and what's so exciting about Toowoomba. It just needs a little bit of foresight and assistance from lots of stakeholders, you know, whether it's councils or landlords or whatever it is, um, getting together and attempting to allow people like how, you know, Ian and Grace started First Coat um, and that's, you know, now got a life its own is continuing. So it'd be good to see younger people start their own art spaces, um, project spaces, whatever it is, whatever sh way, shape and form it comes in, I think that would be exciting. And make sure you jump onto the Your Say website by the 10th of July.